This uh, video lecture is on estimating daily net radiation for reference crop ET calculations. And you see here on the uh, beginning title screen uh, a picture of the front cover of the ASCE standardized reference evapotranspiration equation. And we're going to work with that a lot over the next few weeks. And of course this is an equation that uses weather data to estimate reference crop ET and it's widely used around the world as a way to estimate water use of crops and other kinds of vegetation. And uh, an important input to this equation is net radiation. And it's important to know how that's calculated from weather data. And that's our main focus for today. So again, here's a link to that whole document if you want to look that up and that's the ASCE is the American Society of Civil Engineers. They spent many years, uh, large groups of people, testing and evaluating this equation. And we're going to spend a lot of time on this later. We're going to actually derive the evapotranspiration formula from scratch. But since we're on the radiation section in the class right now, I thought it was important that we take sort of some time here to really study how the net radiation term is calculated for this particular formula. So, but just to give you a little background, um, many of you already know what reference crop ET is, but you know in general it's um, defined as the evapotranspiration rate from a uniform surface of vegetation densely growing, having a specified height and surface resistance, not short of water, and representing a large, you know, 100 meter or larger area. So, you know, it's just a, the hypothetical um, water loss from, uh, from a field of green, well-watered vegetation that's been defined with a certain height, certain, certain surface resistance, etc. Um, there's lots of great documentation out there on what reference crop ET and how it's used. Now, where it is used mostly is to estimate crop water use. So they take the evapotran potential evapotranspiration or reference crop ET, excuse me, calculated from weather data and multiply it by a crop coefficient to get the actual water use of the crop during a day, right? So you see here this in the top. So ETO would come from weather data plugged into our reference crop ET formula. KC would be from a chart or a graph. You multiply those two together. That gives you a rough approximation of crop evapotranspiration for that given day. And you'll see lots of these crop coefficient charts like this that when the crop is young, the KC value or crop coefficient is small. It increases as the crop grows, gets usually a little bit above one during full cover and then declines with senescence. So the reason that we're so interested in reference crop ET and how it's calculated from weather data is so that we can do these types of calculations. If we go into the reference crop ET formula, and as I said, we'll derive this and study it in more detail later, I just wanted to point out that net radiation is a really important term in this formula, and you can see it up here in the numerator. It's very a large term. Any errors in the calculation of net radiation, of course, will strongly affect your calculation of ET. So we need to get that right. So if we look at the ASCE document and look at their recommended way for calculating daily net radiation, it looks like this. Uh, we've already studied net radiation, so you already have a good fundamental understanding of what it is. So here you see that net radiation is basically the difference between the net shortwave radiation in megajoules per meter squared per day uh, minus the net long wave radiation, same units, right? So our goal is to get that RNS term and the RNL term on the right side of this equation. Once we have those, we're all set and ready to calculate daily net radiation. The net short wave component is pretty easy to calculate, and you can see here this is what we've seen before. It's just 1 minus the albedo times global irradiance from the weather station. So you get your daily shortwave radiation uh, from, your, uh, from your weather station and multiply it times 1 minus the albedo and you've got your basically the absorbed shortwave radiation 
uh, and you're ready to go. So RNS is a very simple calculation. Conversely, the net the net long wave radiation component is much harder to calculate. And if we look at it here, it's it's based on this formula derived by Brunt. It's a very old formula, but it's held up pretty well when they compare it to measurements over the years. So there hasn't been a lot of changes in it. It seems to work fairly well. So people have continued to use it and it's the standard approach these days when you're using, uh, when you're calculating reference crop ET. So we can see some things here that look familiar. We see the maximum and minimum air temperature in degrees Kelvin to the fourth power. We see the Stefan Boltzmann constant. So there's our Stefan Boltzmann equation. And this, this section in the middle of the formula um, where there's this cloudiness function and an impact of vapor pressure as you might suspect is is relating to the emissivity of the sky right and so it's predicting the cloudiness of the sky the atmosphere and um, and trying to estimate its emissivity you will note that the temperature of the surface is not in this formula right so unlike our previous calculations where we use the temperature of the surface as a way to estimate outgoing or upwelling long wave infrared radiation. That's not here now, so we're making some assumptions about the temperature of the surface. So this can be calculated solely with weather station data. The trick is getting this cloudiness factor. Everything else looks pretty simple, right? Here's air temperatures from the weather station, the average daily vapor pressure from the weather station, the Stefan Boltzmann equation. All, all pretty simple, but this cloudiness factor is tricky to calculate. So the cloudiness function is empirical and it's based on the radiation measured at the weather station divided by the what's called clear sky radiation. That is a modeled value of what the weather station would have recorded if there hadn't been a cloud in the sky. Right. So if it's a perfectly clear day, this ratio will be close to one. Right. If it's a really cloudy day, it's going to be much less than one. So what we have to do is calculate clear sky radiation, RSO. And RSO is kind of challenging to calculate. So it's based on your elevation above sea level and an estimate of the extraterrestrial radiation outside the atmosphere. That is, if you got in a satellite uh, and it, the satellite was directly over your location and it was taking a reading of solar radiation um, above the atmosphere, what would you get, right? And so we need those two pieces of information, our elevation and our extraterrestrial radiation. Extraterrestrial radiations, a complicated term. You can see it here, equation 21 in the ASCE document. It's a function of the what's called the hour angle, your latitude, the solar declamation, the inverse distance factor, the solar constant. So it's a complex term. And so we have to calculate a bunch of other things before we can calculate that. So you can see we're kind of going down a rabbit hole here. Every new term that we need is dependent on other terms. So it, it turns into a rather um, long kind of piecemeal calculation. We need things like this distance factor, which is calculated from day of year, okay, or J as shown here. Day of year, of course, is just um, uh, if you start on January 1st, where that's day one, you know, January 2nd is day two, January 3rd is day three, etc. You go up through 365 or 366 in a leap year. That's your day of year. Some people call that Julian day. That is incorrect. It's not Julian day. You should use the term calendar day or day of year. And you can get that to get your um, distance factor and your declination angle. These are parameters that are telling us something about the geometry between the sun and your position on the earth. So it's kind of a sun earth geometry um, calculation. Notice that all of these calculations are done in radians. So um, um, 
you have to convert your latitude to radians as well before you start doing these calculations. So there's a recipe for calculating clear sky radiation and it's kind of a long drawn out affair. You have to calculate the declination angle, the distance factor, convert your latitude to radians, calculate that sunset hour angle, calcu finally calculate extraterrestrial radiation, and then finally calculate clear sky radiation. Okay, so it's kind of a long process and but it gets you where you need to be so that you can finally calculate net radiation. So if we think about it, you're going to need a lot of inputs to do a daily net radiation calculation and you're going to need from the weather station, global irradiance, air temperature, both maximum and minimum, and the average daily vapor pressure, humidity in the air. Then you're going to need the day of year, okay, uh, from a calendar and you're going to need, um, uh, so that's that between 1 and 365, you're going to need your latitude and your elevation. So it's a lot of information. So I just did an example here uh, in MATLAB Live Editor just to show you uh, what it would look like and help you to build your own code or your own spreadsheet to do these calculations. Um, so you see my inputs up there at the top. I have my day of year, maximum and min air temp, vapor pressure, global irradiance, elevation, latitude, and albedo. Okay, and in all the ASCE formulas or reference crop ET formulas, I for failed to mention we assume the albedo is 0 0.23. So I start off with that simple calculation, the net short wave. 1 minus albedo times global irradiance, 21 megajoules, so I'm in good shape. Then I start that long process to get the net long wave. So you see me calculating the declination angle, distance factor, lat convert my latitude to uh, uh, radians, calculate the hour angle, calculate extraterrestrial radiation, clear sky radiation, finally get the cloudiness function, which in this case was 0.81, right, so pretty sunny day. Then I can finally calculate net long wave and then get the net radiation at the surface, 16.12 megajoules per meter squared per day. And that's the number that would go into my reference crop ET formula, okay? so. I've put this example on here and I'll post it on Canvas for those of you taking the class because uh, I think it would be really good to work in your software of choice whether it be Microsoft Excel or R or you could use MATLAB like me or some other formula and see if you can build a function or a spreadsheet that calculates daily net radiation. It's a really useful thing to know how to do and um, can help you later when we start working hydrology type problems when we start calculating um, ET.